make sure things are over to get on. Good, Joe. Looking forward to a game. Good to be back. Yeah, we'll be back a while, so good to be back at proper games is the big thing. So um, pre-season can be at times quite an artificial time because you know everyone's training away and obviously guys come back at different stages. But um, yes, yeah, like it's the proper action, the week to week grind of the games that people enjoy. Um, you know, pitting yourself against the best teams that are out there. So looking forward to getting going now. Just something that I, I was interested in, it was a disappointing end to last season. Uh, in order to prepare for this season, is that something that you addressed within the group in order to kind of park it, or was it, let's just take the learnings from that and move on and crack on? Um, well, a bit of both, yeah, because if, if you look back, so we lo lose in the final, you get right down to the last play, you go through that cycle. Like Again, it was a short turnaround. We played the following week um, in the quarterfinal. You get through that, then you lose in the semi-final week after that. So, um, and yeah, we review all those games like we normally would. So, um, as a coaching group, you go away, you re you review the season, and we've worked on lots of different things during the course of the season. So, um, and that's really you know you've got to move on to the next thing. That's what we get judged on is our next game, isn't it? Um, and for sport moves on incredibly fast, as you can see with lots of other sports out there as well. Um, so yeah, we've we've changed a few things. A few people leave at the end of every season, like we talked about at the end of last season. So the group never stays the same season to season. So a few people have moved on. Uh, we've a few new fresh faces in as well. Um, I said we've we've tried to work hard during the course of the preseason. Um, you know, start of the season is always lots of moving parts with players coming back in at different stages, particularly off the back of when there's a tour. Um, so again, some guys just get managed a little bit differently individually. Um, but yeah, no, everyone's kind of rare to go now at this point in time. Um, just a few things, the way we do things, as I said, some you know different voices in the mix as well, which is positive. So the group is ever evolving, um, hopefully in a positive direction. Um, but definitely, yeah, like you, you lose at the end of last season, and like it has a bit of a sort of a hollow sense um, through that holiday period and into the early part of pre-season. So um, it's important that we understand how we can improve, uh, look to improve as a group. Um, but regardless, you know, whether we won or obviously we finished the season by losing a couple of playoff games, um, you know, it would be the same off the back of winning. So um, it's certainly off the back of losing definitely does sharpen the focus, I think, coming into a new season because you know, we've got a block of seven games um, where we just have to battle out for every single point that we can, you know, and try and give, leave ourselves in best possible shape for when the break happens in November. and. You know, then try and pick up off the back of those November internationals then. One final one for me, uh, Sean O'Brien is part of the setup uh, this season. How much of an impact does he have on already? Oh, like he brings real presence, I think, to the group straight away. His power of his personality. Um, so, yeah, no, he's been good straight in. Uh, not shy, just getting involved straight away, which has been great. Um, adds a huge amount of experience. Bit of time away, I think. You know, obviously he's followed closely what's going on here. Um, you know, so he's he's got that critical eye, I guess. Um, so now he's been a good addition to the group. Great voice, um, and yeah, I think he's a bright future in coaching. Thanks, Liam. Pleasure. Hi, Leo Ashling here from Off the Ball. How are you? Great, thanks, Ashling. Yeah. Good. Um, you have a new performance coach in uh, Declan Darcy. Declan, of course, he's been involved with Dublin GA. He works alongside Jim Galvin. What do you hope that he can add to the setup, or what has he added so far? Well, Declan, yeah, he did a little bit of work with our leaders last year, so it's just evolving really the next phase of that piece. Um, but it's sort of in terms of, I think he'll, you know, because he'll be more involved here with us this year. You know, we sort of dipped our toe in the water a little bit last year. So, um, yeah, Declan, as you rightly point out, a huge amount of experience with a very, very successful team. Um, and that, that, I guess, that succession piece over time, that continued success, there's very few teams have actually mastered that. Um, and that group were very, very successful. So um, he's a wealth of experience, Dec. Um, <clears throat> and as, as I said, like so, some of the work I do with the individuals, you know, so that observation. So you know, coaches are very much in the moment, but it's like it's who's taking that 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 view from from the sidelines. Um, and Deck has a huge amount of experience as we touched on. So um, I think he's a really really important addition for us. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, Liam.
Brilliant. And when you look back at last year and you had time to reflect, could you say um, any area or reason that you didn't get over the line or you, you weren't as successful as you would have liked to have been? I know it's hard to probably pinpoint one thing, but is there an area that you say to yourself, okay, that's something that we could can look at? Um, yeah, look... Like- there's a lot of really good stuff. Like you get to a European Cup final and you're down to the last couple of minutes in your head. So like you've clearly done a lot of good things to get to that point. So you're not there by accident. Um, when you lose the game, I think everyone thinks, oh, you play, it's been a catastrophe. Um, but there's definitely parts in the game. Um, and even you could see it with some of the guys even on tour in New Zealand, uh, the adjustments that they make in terms of some of the decision-making piece. Um, whether that's the decision making for the team or some of the individual decisions in game as well. So that's a part that you know, it's ever evolving. You know, you have young players coming into the team, you want them to grow. And even the most experienced guys, you know, they, there's always parts of their game that they can improve and, and learn. Um, so, yeah, th- th- there's that part. You know, definitely, I think at the end of last season, you know, post that, like if you think, you know, we there was a sort of a little bit of flatness in the air. It was, you know, playing rugby in June. Uh, we tried to address that um, this season. We went on a 12 county tour of Leinster um, and we want to connect more with the the clubs around the province because, you know, we need to we need to grow that support base all the time. So have we taken our eye off the ball there? Potentially, yeah. You know, we, we didn't have great crowds in June. It's very unusual for us to play rugby in June, but you know, we won't have it this season, but in future seasons we will. So we want to make sure that we're we're doing more. You know, COVID has had a huge amount of challenges for everyone as we as we well know. So we haven't had any of those open days. So that was one part that we really want to try and address is trying to get out and connect with the, the fan base more and, and spread the the connection as wide as possible ideally so um and we got an amazing response you know when, when we went out to to train in the different venues um you know we hit 12 counties of course across two days so it was pretty action-packed fairly hectic um but unbelievable responses that we got so um big open session that we had up in longford in particular um and kilkenny and the thigh uh, the following day so but we hit lots of different spots along the way where um you know we great support out and about so that's a big thing for us as well um you know because if this is going to be a thing where we're going to be playing rugby in june like you know you have people have certain habits that they go through um, and it's definitely something where it led to definitely a bit of flatness so all across the board so it's that's something we've tried to work hard on this pre-season but again that's that's not going to happen overnight, is it? So we need to make sure we try to continue that over the course of you know the season and beyond that as well. Brilliant, Thanks so much. Best of luck for the season. Thanks, yeah. Hi, Leo. Tony Tiger, Hi, Tony. Uh, I was just wondering how your new signings have settled in, the likes of Jason Jenkins and Charlie Nottai. Do you think so we could see them in Zagreb this weekend? Yeah, um, well, the two of them played against Harlequins last week, so um, which was a de- it was a good hit out for us, you know. Uh, Quinns, Harlequins played, they started at the weekend against Newcastle away, so they had a good win there. So, you know, they're probably a little bit ahead of us in terms of their, you know, their pre season, getting ready for the season. So, for us, uh, with a lot of young guys, particularly, and uh, we number of guys come back from injury, and that was pleasing. So it was a decent hit out against quality opposition number one. Um, Jason and Charlie both got through forty minutes, which was good to see for them. Um, so they get Leinster jerseys on the back and start to build some of those connections. But yeah, you know Charlie's got a wealth of experience. Um, different environments, teams that he's been involved in, played with the All Blacks, um, Grants only one cap. Um, you know he's been away in France over the last number of years, so he's experienced in Europe. So he gets the game there. So. Um, he'll hopefully add a lot to the group. As I said, it was it was a pretty young group to travel over there, so he's a very very important voice in that group. Uh, Jason missed a lot of preseason. He, he had a finger issue when he arrived here, and um, that he needed to get tidied up. And um, so he had a procedure on that. But you know he'd only started training, as in full team training, the week before the preseason game. But um, in terms of physical size presence, um, it was great for him just to get forty minutes under his belt as well. So. Hopefully, he'll push on the two of them. Um, again, with the addition of South African teams in the URC, just trying to understand that mindset piece that those teams bring. Um, 
but again, you know, Jason is he's definitely one for the future. I, I would I would think um, Johan obviously brought him into Monster initially would would not have known Jason well, um, but definitely he's he's um, he hasn't been overplayed over the last couple of years, um, but he's definitely one who's there's um, there's plenty of ability there. Um, yeah, like one of the things is like they've got they've got players that you know are committed to Zebra. A lot of young good young, young players. They've made some signs from overseas as well. Um, yeah, like we struggled at different stages against Zebra. You know, we played at a three nil classic there a few seasons ago. Um, you know, even last year in the game in the RDS, when we're just looking back and you know, very aggressive defensively. Um, so it's making sure that we're ready for the threats that they bring. So, and they've had a bit of a disruptive preseason as well. You know, their their game they were due to play against Cardiff the weekend. Um, I understand they sort of had a training scenario piece instead of the actual game. So, um, yeah, it's been hard to try and get exact footage. So it probably means that we just have to focus a little bit more on ourselves. Um, which is sometimes not a bad thing as well. You can get a little bit bogged down sometimes in the opposition. But we have a fair idea of some of the comings and goings of players that they have, um, some of the footage from the end of last season um, as well. But um, yeah, they're a team we've struggled against in the past. Um, and as I said, like we've plenty of moving parts always to start of the season as well. So, um, But it's a good, good opportunity for our guys just to showcase what they've done over the course of pre-season. Uh, Leo, it's in uh, down here on audio. Uh, has two ex Leinster men coming in as coaches made life easier for you? Um, yeah, they, they, they have. They bring a real pride, you know, because Andrew Goodman, yeah, ex Leinster player, um, and yeah, like he's, you know, he he has a lot of time for the club, um, and. Um, you know, in terms of getting him here, like it's it's quite a coup, really. Like getting a coach out of the Crusaders, very very successful environment that they have there. Um, so for him to come in, I think is a real coup for everyone here at the club. Um, and yeah, he's passionate about the team. Um, you know, he's excited, nervous about the challenge. Um, and Sean, he's someone who's sort of like a iconic player uh, in many respects. Um, you know, everything that he's achieved in the game, not just with Leinster, with Ireland, and also with the Lions as well. Um, so yeah, like he, the players are hugely enthused by having the two players there. So um, hopefully, go on to have very, very successful careers in coaching. Um, obviously, with us in the short term, and we'll see where it goes. From. But um, yeah, no, we're we're very appreciative to have the two lads back in uh, blue.